Good morning everyone and welcome to today's instalment in our check-in and chat webinar series. It's great to have you with us. My name's Caitlin McMorrow and I'll be your webinar host this morning. Um, before we go any further, we're meeting obviously on lots of different lands around Australia today since we're all dialed in virtually. So I'd just like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of all the lands that we're meeting on today and by paying my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Just to let you know, this session will be recorded. So you'll be able to view it again afterwards if you'd like to, or share it with friends who might've missed the session. If you go to www.visionaustralia.org slash check in and chat, the webinar recording will be up on that page um, within a couple of days after the session. So you'll be able to find it there. You can also listen to recordings of our previous check in and chat webinars from that page and check out the topics for upcoming sessions as well. As I mentioned, my name's Caitlin McMorrow and joining us as our guest speaker this morning, we have Conrad Brown, who's the manager of our Vision Australia radio and audio division. Um, Conrad has over 20 years experience in commercial and uh, community media, including publishing and advertising. And he's really passionate about community radio and accessible audio content. And he's been managing the Vision Australia network uh, radio network for the last four years. Conrad, welcome to the session. Great to be here. Thanks, Caitlin. So today, um, not surprisingly, we're talking about <laughs> accessing audio information, be that through radio, TV, podcasts, um, other online and streaming services. There's lots of options um, for accessing audio content currently. So we live in a pretty lucky time where that's mm. concerned. Um, we'll also be talking about some of the ways that uh, Vision Australia can continue to provide support and keep, help you to keep accessing information in this challenging time while we're all a bit more isolated than we normally would be. If you'd like to ask a question during the session, you can type it into the chat uh, section of the Zoom window that you're watching this webinar in. So screen reader users, if you're joining this session via PC, you can press Alt-H to expand the chat window and then type your question into the box and press Enter. Um, we just ask you to try and keep your questions general um, and not share any personal information about yourself that you might not want other people to see. And we'll try to get through as many of your questions as we can during the time we have available in the session. So I thought, Conrad, we might start by talking a bit about Vision Australia Radio because it's one of the key ways that we provide information. Um, but it's not something that all of our viewers or listeners might necessarily be aware of. Mm. Can you tell us a bit about Vision Australia Radio, how it started and how it operates now? Yeah, sure. So the primary purpose of Vision Australia Radio and similar types of services is to provide access to information and also um, entertaining and engaging content for blind, low vision and print disabled uh, individuals. Um, so it's part of a larger network of radio stations that operate across Australia um, that's part of the RPH uh, network, which is um, the old fashioned government name for what we do, which is Radio for Print Handicapped, but we are very much Vision Australia Radio. So um, there's uh, RPH stations in all states um, and they operate differently. Um, Vision Australia looks after Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne and seven regional services in Victoria as well as a digital radio service in Darwin. Um, but we also have, um, like a lot of radio stations now, um, an online stream that you can access through um, all the different ways that you listen to radio. But um, we always direct people to go through our website, which is varadio.org. Um, we have uh, about 650 volunteers and a small handful of staff who help us put um, our radio services to air every week, although in these COVID-19 times that's been uh, slightly changed, um, but we're still managing to operate a full radio service out of Melbourne and Adelaide while still adhering to all of the physical distancing guidelines that are in place, um, but also getting creative by doing programs 
off-site and from home as well using lots of different technologies. So it's a really interesting and challenging time, but at the heart of it all, our service remains the same. We still provide access to information through um, primarily reading of printed and published materials. So a lot of newspaper, magazine and periodical and book readings alongside specialist programs about a lot of different topics that uh, hopefully appeal to a lot of different people. Excellent. It sounds like you've definitely got a pretty um, extensive team of volunteers there, which is great, and using mm. some innovative um, strategies in the current time, which is fantastic. Um, you mentioned um, some of the specialised programming and um, particularly access to printed content and things like that via the radio service. Um, I know we have a really wide variety of programs on Vision Australia Radio that cater to a lot of different interests. Can you tell us a little bit about, or give us a bit of an overview about what kinds of things are available? Yeah, absolutely. So um, alongside the uh, re reading programs that I mentioned before, um, which is primarily um, we read the local, um, I guess, large newspaper in each state. So um, for Melbourne, we do The Age and Herald Sun. Um, for Perth, we do the West Australian and in, and in Adelaide, we do the Advertiser, but we also read a lot of local community newspapers as well, because the purpose of um, our community broadcasting licenses is to also make sure that we are producing and presenting content that is um, directed at the community of interest locally. So really making sure that what you're hearing on air a lot of the time is around um, the, uh, the content is around making sure that people are hearing what's going on in their neighborhood or in their town that's effect, going to affect them as well. But the specialist content, like I mentioned before, is, is really wide and varied. We have a Seen Eye Dogs program, uh, which is obviously about Seen Eye Dogs, but it's a lot more than that as well. We look at like all the different aspects of training and things like that. Um, we have a ton of current affairs programs, um, particularly around um, local issues. Again, we've got shows coming out of Adelaide, Perth and Melbourne and our regional centres around what's happening locally um, in local government and, and things and councils and things like that as well. Um, all with a specific focus on um, things that are affecting the blind and low vision and print disabled community as well. We also have some, you know, just uh, general kind of fun shows, um, things around music, films, um, latest books that are coming out. Uh, we have a really um, popular tech show called Talking Tech with um, one of our Vision Australia, Australia colleagues and a former Vision Australia radio manager as well, um, which delves into the ever evolving and changing world of tech. So there is um, definitely a program for everyone. I encourage everyone to go to varadio.org and look at our program guides on there and, and see what's on offer. Yeah, there's certainly a huge um, variety. I know I quite enjoy the Food for Thought program that we have, which is uh, a cooking one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's and a great show. Yeah. And also they hear this program um, from the library where they talk about some new release books and things that have been added to the catalogue. Um, that's always a good one as well. Um, can you, I, I know we've kind of talked about the fact that we have um, radio services in different regions and things like that. Can you just recap um, some of the ways for people to listen to the service or sure. catch up so, on programs? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're um, in our local um, broadcast areas, so Melbourne, Adelaide and Perth, or in the seven regional um, centres, you can listen to us locally. And again, if you go to varadio.org, it's got all the um, frequencies you can listen to us on AM, FM, and in our metropolitan services on digital radio as well. Um, and then you can also listen to us online. So there's a lot of ways that you can listen um, through different uh, web services. Again, varadio.org has got a link to our tune-in um, links on, uh, for Melbourne and Adelaide. Um, but you can also listen through smart speakers. Um, and there's also obviously listening through your phone using all the different radio apps. Uh, there's definitely an easy, it's much easier now um, to get your, be able to listen to radio in lots of different ways. But at the end of the day, you know, we're still available on the, the traditional uh, old school transistor as well. So um, it's definitely uh, a lot of opportunities to catch what Vision Australia Radio is doing. And online has just made that a lot easier. 
Fantastic. If you've just joined us, welcome along to our check-in and chat session. This morning we're speaking with Conrad Brown, who's the manager of Vision Australia's radio and audio division. And not surprisingly, we're talking about different ways to access audio information. Um, Conrad, I thought we might go on now and talk a little bit about podcasts because they're such a popular way to access both entertain, um, entertainment and information at the moment. Um, and one of the great things about podcasts is that you can listen to them whenever and wherever you want to. So no more realising too late that you've missed <laughs> your favourite program, uh, which is good for people like me who never remember when things are on. Um, could you start a little bit about uh, by telling us a bit about podcasts and how they work? Sure. It's um, Podcasting has evolved in a lot of ways, but in some ways it's still pretty much the same as it was when it started to kind of become more and more um, a common way of, of accessing uh, shows like you were just saying. So at the end of the day, um, it's a audio file that's a saved version of usually either um, a radio program or a standalone um, audio conversation. And it's a really easy way to be able to find and access um, different audio content. Podcasting has really, I guess, changed the way that we consume um, audio, um, you know, it's developed like a lot of things. It was kind of the forerunner for um, streaming services in a way that it's audio on demand. And um, the good and bad thing about podcasting is, is that there is so much content out there that um, no matter how much you listen to or and you know, try and get through all of your favorites, there's literally just more and more content coming on all the time, which you know, if you're a, a podcast junkie or you just enjoy really good radio and audio, um, it's a, a good problem to have. Yeah, you can definitely fall down the rabbit hole, can't you, every time <laughs> yeah. you go looking to see what's available. Um, just a reminder to everybody as well, if you would like to ask a question during this session, you can type it into the chat section of the Zoom window that you're watching this webinar in. If you're a screen reader user and you're logged in on a PC, you can expand the chat section by pressing Alt-H and then type your question into the box and press Enter. Um, as you just mentioned, Conrad, one of the challenging things about podcasts is that there's just so many to choose from. How do people go about finding content that interests them? Yeah, so as long as you've got a device computer that's connected to the internet, you pretty much can access podcasts from mm. everywhere and anywhere. Um, so you can go down the traditional path of literally just going into a browser like Chrome um, or Google and literally just typing in podcast about this subject. So let's say it's a, a podcast about gardening and I can guarantee you, you'll probably come up with about a hundred options um, because people are, are really love talking about things they're passionate about and producing and making podcasts, you know, to varying degrees of quality is a lot easier nowadays. So there's definitely going to be a lot of content there that you can find searching online but there's also a lot of um radio networks and podcast networks have their own app or their own websites as well so depending on what sort of content you're looking for if it's things like current affairs um you know abc has definitely got um it covered in terms of um what's happening locally and nationally and you can then dive in overseas if you're looking for content um you know the united states has a wonderful um app through their national public radio, NPR, which has access to all of their shows across the country. BBC has the same in the UK. There is just so much content out there. Um, it really does start with you just saying, you know, what is it that you like, searching for it, um, and using apps or whatever device you're on, you're guaranteed to find quite a bit to listen to. Excellent. Um, and I guess if people wanted to use some of those podcast apps, they would just search for them on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and things like that, would they? Yeah, that's right. And usually if you are searching initially through a browser, they are recommending apps more and more now. Mm. So um, be able to give you, you know, a bit of a description about what the app is, or you can just dive in yourself and just start typing in. Um, I yeah. know that Pocket Cast is one that is very popular. Um, it kind of pulls in lots of content and lots of podcasts from different sites um, and it's accessible as well. So um, it's a really great way for people to just have a really good look around. I think one of the great things about looking 
um, for a new podcast to listen to as well as nine times out of 10, you end up listening to something that you never were really looking for in the first place. Um, so uh, that can be a really fun part of um, looking for that next podcast binge or something interesting to listen to. That's true. And a lot of the apps seem to have their own um, categories and things that you can browse through, don't they? Or they'll tell you what's trending or what's popular at the moment so you can get a feel for what other people are listening to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a, a big thing now is about making sure people understand, you know, if you're into a certain genre or into a certain topic, it's all about that next recommend, you know, what is it that you can go on to next or what is it that you're looking for? So, yeah, there's some really um, interesting ways of finding new content out there. But you know, at the end of the day, um, it's, it's really about making sure that you can um, not get too overwhelmed and, and start you know, 50 podcasts and try and keep up with them all, which is my problem. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm a bit of a self-confessed podcast junkie, I'm afraid. Me too. Um, I always download way more than I could ever listen to in a, a lifetime. But, you know, exactly. it's good to be an optimist. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I guess, and as we've just talked about, the great thing about podcasts is that you can listen to them in so many different ways. Um, can you tell us how you listen to podcasts and whether there are any particular apps or devices that you use that you find work well? Yeah, sure. I, I guess um, I listen to a lot that are produced through radio stations. So I subscribe either through Apple Podcasts um, to the actual show themselves, um, or I go through their websites sometimes, which then syncs up with my iPhone as well. Um, I've started using a couple of apps in particular to get specific shows, but one of the ones that I've found that is um, becoming more and more a go-to and it's very good at um, being able to find a lot of content on there is Spotify. Um, another streaming service that does have a, it's basically again pulling in all the content from different places into one space and they're very much into that recommending um, uh, as well when they, if you listen to a couple of different podcasts, there's definitely after that they'll give you a list of other ones that you might like that are in a similar vein but um, you know, I, I guess really it's all become about my phone. Um, and when I'm at home, I listen through a smart speaker as well. Um, but you know, it's, it really is now it's about being able to, to listen to them where, whenever you want, wherever you want, which is really what audio on demand should be as well. Excellent. Um, and do you have a favorite podcast at the moment or possibly oh. a couple of favorites since I know you're a, a podcast. <laughs> I do have a few. I, um, there's a show, uh, an ABC <laughs> show that's um, through their um, Double J network um, done by Zan Rowe, which is called Take Five. Uh, she interviews a different musician or I guess a person of interest, uh, usually once a fortnight. Um, it's kind of dropped off a little bit because I think um, she usually counts on getting a lot of people from um, who are touring in Australia, but she gets a really amazing mix of um, Auss Aussie and international guests who come on and talk about five songs that in some way shaped their um, thinking about something or had an impact on their arts and careers. Um, one that I recently dived into um, that was from quite a few years back was one that she did with Nick Cave. Uh, and just really fascinating, you know, someone that I don't know a lot about, but I like his music. I um, mean, just really interesting to, to kind of hear him talk about something, influences, I guess, that you usually wouldn't hear. Um, I also have uh, a few, there's a, an American uh, one that I listen to via NPR called Pop Culture Happy Hour. Uh, and they oh, do yes. a really, really great job of um, just kind of looking at what's happening in the world of film and television and books and things like that. Um, it's four people usually talking about different topics. It can be funny, but it can also be quite poignant. And it's at the heart of it, you know, it's really just four people talking about it, but they become, I guess, you know, people that you identify with and they can sort of become these fake friends of yours <laughs> in a way um, and give you some really great insight into what's happening out there. So those are two that I really like. That's great. Um, and I hadn't heard of the, the Take 5 one, so I'll have to check that out. Yeah, Add that to my ever-growing list of podcasts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a couple. Um, ABD, ABC does some really good programming, actually. I have quite a few podcasts from them. Um, their Off Track program, which is sort of a... Um, 
science and nature exploring kind of one is quite good um yeah. and i really enjoy that um and also there i think it's called lost and found it's one where they do sort of virtual tours of different cities around the world um which is obviously because it's audio it's quite immersive um so yeah for a vision impaired person it's kind of an interesting way to experience some of those places that we might not have been to oh that's brilliant i love that yeah um we might take a couple of questions now. And just a reminder, if you would like to ask a question during the session, you can type it into the chat section of the Zoom window that you're watching this webinar in. Um, Rosemary said that she didn't quite catch the name of the person who does the Take 5 podcast. Can you remind us who that was again? Yeah, it's Azan Rowe. She's um, an ABC personality, I guess. She's on Double J and she's also, um, she does, I think, a segment on music on um, ABC Breakfast as well um, during the week um, on television. And she used to be on Triple J. So she's like um, a lot of people, she aged out <laughs> on Triple J <laughs> and has ended up on Double J, which um, is where I've ended up going myself. Because Double J is a bit sort of more like what Triple J used to be in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, isn't it, yeah. in some ways? It's, it's yeah. for the more mature uh, listener, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we've also had a question from Alan, who was wondering about the most accessible apps for vision impaired people to use. I know you mentioned Pocket Casts um, and also the Apple Podcasts app. Any other recommendations that you had in that vein? Yeah, so um, the other one that we use at Vision Australia Radio is Podbean. Um, oh, yeah. it, it's, it's accessible um, in pretty much every way and it is a really great way for us to present our podcasts as well. Um, it's got varying uh, levels, I guess, of ways that you can use it. Um, but I recommend using it through a computer. It seems to be a lot more um, easier in terms of the way that it lays out and the way it also um, displays all of the different podcasts. And it seems to be a little bit easier to also um, go through and, and be able to listen to them um, in, in sync. Um, so I've noticed with um, uh, sometimes on the iPhone, it can jump around a little bit. Um, yeah. But Podbean is one that we use a lot for all of our podcasts. Um, we upload probably 20 new episodes a week to Podbean of our various different shows. Um, and it's a platform that, yeah, it seems, it seems to um, be, it's, it's functional, but also um, a good one for us to use in terms of accessibility. Yeah, and I guess which apps people like sometimes depends a bit on what um, level of detail they need or what kind of interface they prefer, doesn't it? It's yeah, of, true. Yeah. Um, one of our audiences just mentioned that Overcast is quite an accessible podcasting app. And yes, I can vouch for that. I've used that one as well. Um, the other one that seems to be getting a bit of traction in the accessibility community at the moment is Castro, which mm. um, works a bit like an inbox. So you can kind of quickly scroll through what's new. So um, that one might be worth a look if you subscribe to a lot of podcasts and don't always get through them all. Um, I, I believe one of the advantages of the app is that you can kind of see at a quick glance what's what the new episodes are and things like that so oh, that's great i've just written that one down thank you no worries <laughs> and uh, some of the apps like overcast and downcast have different speed controls and things like that so if you like to um, get through a bit more content and speed your podcasts up a bit you can do that as well so um hopefully that gives you a bit to go on alan but yeah it probably depends a little bit on what kind of interface you like you might have to try a couple and see what you prefer um, let's go on and talk a bit about audio description because it's always a pretty hot topic in our community. I guess mm. while we're all spending more time at home, a lot of us are spending more time watching TV and streaming services as well. Um, but one of the challenges for that pe for people who are blind or have low vision um, is that it can be hard to find content that's enjoyable and easy to follow. Um, fortunately, content with audio description is gradually becoming more widely available. So I thought we might talk a little bit about that. Can you talk about some of the recent developments regarding access to audio description on free-to-air TV? Yeah, so that was uh, quite a um, pleasant surprise, I think, for a lot of people. Um, a lot of organisations like Vision Australia and Blind Citizens Australia had been advocating for a very long time um, to get audio description on 
commercial television in Australia. Um, there was a pilot back in 2015 um, that brought up some really good um, results, but unfortunately it didn't progress very far from there. So the advocacy continued for quite a while. And then um, in the middle of December last year, there was an announcement um, from the government that they were going to fund a $2 million um, service, AD service, uh, across SBS and um, ABC starting from July 1 of this year. Um, but it's actually progressed a lot more quickly than that. Um, and SBS in particular has really jumped on board um, and has started to do trials already um, and putting out a lot of different content. At the moment, it seems to be the majority of the audio described content is coming from overseas. But I think the expectation is, is that it'll start to become more of a balance of local and, and international content as well. But yeah, a really great step in the right direction, although um, still a long way to go until um, audio description is uh, accessible everywhere, like right across all of our television um, networks. Mm, definitely an encouraging step forward, though, I guess, to see mm. some of those broadcasters starting to adopt it. And um, yeah, hopefully, as you say, it'll become more more widely available as that um, progresses. We're also starting to see more access to audio described content on video on demand streaming services like Netflix and things like that. Can you talk us through some of the options for accessing that and what's available on different services? Yeah, I've um, I consulted with our audio um, description coordinator, Michael Ward, up in Sydney, because I knew that a lot of content was coming out on streaming services, but I didn't realise just how much. Um, and it kind of it makes sense in a lot of ways. Is that um, you know a lot of other countries, particularly in Europe and North America, um, have been audio describing for a long time, and it's a service that they provide regularly. So a lot of that content because now we have access to all these new, new streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime um, and, and Stan as well, um, there's just more and more content that's becoming available. So um, the majority of it that I initially um, found was a lot of films, which makes sense um, because there is a lot of film content available. But in our discussions and, and kind of looking um, a little bit further, there is more and more television that's coming on there. Um, on Netflix, for example, The Crown, and Orange is the New Black, both really popular ongoing series um, are available with audio description. And, you know, look, I think with what's happening with SBS and ABC, it's a really positive sign that more local content will become available. But I think one thing that I've always, um, since I kind of came into Vision Australia and started to understand a lot more about accessible audio, particularly audio description, was that Australia actually produces a lot of audio described content, which goes to other countries. Um, but we haven't had a, um, you know, a mandate to play it here. So I think knowing that and knowing that it, there is um, a lot of content that is going to be picked up and produced in this funding for the ABC and SBS as well, I think we'll start to see even more coming through. And I think it's really important that we continue to be able to access all this great international content through all the different platforms. But I think the real um, end goal and the thing that would be really great to see is more local content being done, you know, on demand weekly for really popular TV programs. Um, I think that should be what we're really aiming for. So I'm hoping that comes, you know, along with it. But I think, you know, to have more options and to be able to go onto Netflix and, and those other streaming services and see what's available there um, just makes it you know even better for for the blind and low vision user as well. Excellent, yeah, and um, yeah, it's certainly become a lot more available than it was in the last few years. So it's quite yeah. exciting to see that progressing. So in terms of the streaming services, we've got some on Netflix, um, some audio described content on Stan, some on Prime, and some on Disney Plus as well. I think, don't we? Yeah. That's true. Of our local ones. Yeah. And I think Disney Plus is probably being <laughs> such a big player. Um, it'll just be, you know, they're just going to bring more and more content um, that will be available over time. They're, they're adding to their roster and um, the access that they've got to a lot of different content there um, will definitely include more audio described as well. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, potentially good if you're uh, watching movies with your kids, because a lot of kids' movies can be really hard to follow without audio description. Sort of, um, you get these big patches with no dialogue and things like that. So yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see what comes out on Disney with that. Um, is there particular technology that people need to access audio description via their TV or smart device? How does that all work? So there's different settings for um, different televisions um, and through the streaming services, there's different settings as well. Um, I know through Netflix, um, you, you know, you have to just basically go into the general, to, into the settings, go into general, then select accessibility and there's video descriptions um, there and you can um, turn that off and on depending on what you're watching. Um, but SBS has released this really great guide and I encourage everyone to um, go online if you um, search for SBS Audio Described Guide. It gives you a, a list of all the different ways that you can um, access their audio described content on a variety of different devices, a lot of different televisions and mobile devices as well. But you can also um, email them um, at audio description at sbs.com.au or call them on 1800 500 727 and they will provide you information um, about accessing um, audio description as well, which um, from what I looked at would probably replicate across a lot of the other services as well, um, but also gives you an opportunity to provide some feedback to them too. That's great. And yeah, it does seem to vary a bit depending on what service you access it on. Um, I know with some of the services like Prime, you actually have to start playing the program and then go into the language settings and select English with audio description. Um, but usually once you've done it for one program, it keeps the setting for all of them, which is right. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, I think that's quite similar to captioning as well. Mm. It's funny though that there is different standards for everyone. It would be yeah. like everyone would just get on the same page. It would, wouldn't it? It'd be nice if they were all the same. Um, I guess though, one thing to mention is that Vision Australia's assistive technology help desk could potentially assist you with that if you were um, needing to get your technology set up so that you could use audio description. Um, so you can contact them by calling the main number, which is 1300 847 466 and asking for the assistive technology help desk. Um, that something that they would be able to give you a hand with. Um, we might uh, take a few more questions. Um, so we've got one from um, Lindy who's asking about accessing audiobooks via Kindle and Audible apps and things like that. Is that something you've had any experience with, Conrad? It's probably something we could make a future webinar out of potentially. I think you could. Um, yeah, it's actually a really great topic. Um, the amount of audiobooks that is available commercially and through the Vision Australia library um, for clients as well is just growing so fast. Um, and with the amendments to um, the Marrakesh Treaty, um, which has opened up um, you know, a sharing of titles and content between international libraries will mean um, organizations like Vision Australia are going to have a ton of um, books that they can get from all around the world, um, which is really exciting. But look, um, the apps, I've used um, Audible um, primarily to, to download um, audio books. Uh, it's pretty straightforward um, from from my perspective. From but from an accessible point of view, I actually am not sure about Audible. I think that would be one that would be really um, good to follow up on. Yeah, I I can say that I use Audible quite a lot, um, and it is it's pretty accessible, which is good. Okay. Um, you just have all your uh, books if you're using it on say something like an iPhone or an iPad. Um, all your books just show up in your library, and you can flick right and left between them and select the one that you want to play. So yeah, it's fairly straightforward. Um, and the accessibility of things like Kindle and iBooks is sort of expanding people's access to. Um, ebooks and things like that as well which is great mm. i guess the more material that we can um, access the better absolutely um when we were talking about audio description rosemary has asked if there's any recommendation for uh, little ones she's got a son who's um four and a half and uh, they're already accessing some audio books but interested in what else might be available so from an audio description content wise i'm 
I'd probably have to defer that to someone who uh, has got uh, kids that has uh, tapped into a lot of that content. But I'm, I'm assuming, like you said before, Disney Plus would be a great one. Yeah. Um, but I did recently discover, um, because of what's happening with COVID-19 and um, access to content around the world, um, Audible recently made 100 uh, kid-friendly and young adult titles available for free. So um, you don't have to download their apps or you don't have to log in or have an account. Um, there's 100 titles on there that you can literally just stream. So if you go on your, um, just on your browser or in your phone and type in um, free Audible um, or audio books from Audible for children, um, it comes up with this really great list. I've been sending that out to pretty much everyone I know who's got a kid, um, saying, look, I can't do much for you at the moment, but um, hopefully this will keep them amused for a while. Um, and look, a lot, of, a lot of it is classic content, I guess you could say in, in some ways, um, but there's some really great things on there. And, and to be able to just click and stream it, um, I think it's probably every parent's best friend when they need it. Yeah, it's a, it's a great list um, as well. And it's, um, yeah, you're never too old for Winnie the Pooh, are you? Really? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and I, we'll talk about it a little bit more at the end, but um, Rosemary, we do have a webinar on Thursday around supporting your kids at home. Um, so there might be some tips there for your little guy as well if you're able to uh, tune in for that one. Um, I'm just having a look to see if we've got any other questions. Um, did we, we didn't give a phone number for the SBS audio description, did we? I did, but I can... Oh, you did? Can again. we repeat yeah. that one? Because we had someone who missed it. Yeah, no problem at Including all. Including so me. I didn't hear you give it either. So no, that's go. okay. So you can call one 727 or you can email audio description at sbs.com.au. Excellent. So we've talked about lots of dip, different tips and strategies for accessing audio information um, during the session today. It's been quite a lot to cover. Um, can you talk a little bit about what Vision Australia is doing um, in this time of social distancing to sort of help people get up, set up with their technology and access the information that they need? Yeah, I think Vision Australia has been incredibly responsive and, and really proactive in this space. Um, alongside, you know, obviously radio, which I, um, I think has been really good to quickly respond to it as well and make sure that we continue to deliver the service. Um, our TeleLink and TeleHealth teams have really jumped into action to make sure that we continue to deliver all the services that um, you, you regularly access um, through the organisation, albeit in a different way, but still very much um, a, a way for you to be able to to connect in and, and get the help and support you need. And our adaptive technology um, services, you know, obviously there to help you with any accessibility issues around technology. Um, and our national call center has been doing a phenomenal job as well, making sure people under has been changes to service delivery, how they can still access that service. And um, I think just, you know, even these webinars and some of the other work that Vision Australia has been doing online uh, has been really, really a wonderful way to show that, you know, we may have to um, be physically distant, but it doesn't mean that we still can't connect and, and get the support and help that we need. And I understand we, we might be um, airing some of the check-in and chat webinars on radio at some point for those who um, don't always have the tech to access them. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. We're looking at um, some ways that we can package up this great content um, and get it on air. So we actually have just um, done a few different partnerships um, with a few uh, organisations who also um, produce their own podcast content. So we're really at the moment, um, you know, while we're always doing our own live programs and pre-recorded programs is great. It's really wonderful to be able to tap in to content like these webinars and put them out on our radio service um, so more and more people can listen to them and hopefully uh, get some good tips and, and learn a little bit more about the different services within Vision Australia. Excellent. And did you want to give the Vision Australia radio webpage again just so that people can access all of that? 
Always. Find it all in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So um, varadio.org. It's a pretty easy one to remember. Um, so it's got all of our podcasts on there. Uh, it's got all of our programming information, how you can listen to us online. There's a lot of articles about different programs that we've been involved in. Um, we've got a really great Mother's Day classic um, program that we're running this Sunday. It's going to be a live program. Um, the Mother's Day classic is a big uh, fitness fun run and walk that happens every year, but because of everything that's going on, it's going virtual. So we're partnering them to help them uh, be able to connect everyone in and, and so that they can feel a part of this big event, even though they'll all be doing it remotely and from home, but also to try and um, uh, connect it back into the blindness and low vision community um, around health and well-being and fitness as well. But um, two, you know, really great not-for-profit organisations coming together for a collaboration and um, to support um, the National Breast Cancer Foundation and research around that as well. So look, there's there's so much going on with radio and audio in general. So please check out varadio.org or call the National Call Centre, or look on the Vision Australia website as well. Um, and you'll find lots of different links there to take you to or through what we're, what we're getting up to. Sounds fantastic. And the program on Sunday is a really great event and a great cause. So, um, yeah, it will be fantastic to tune into that one. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. So we're just about ready to wrap up. I'd just like to thank all of you for uh, tuning into our check-in and chat webinar this morning. We've been speaking with Conrad Brown, who is a podcast junkie and also <laughs> uh, manager of our Vision Australia radio and audio division. Just a reminder that we do have a recording of this session. It will be made available within a couple of days if you go to www.visionaustralia.org slash check in and chat. You'll be able to find it there. And uh, just a reminder that all of our previous check in and chat sessions are up there as well. Um, if you'd like to listen to them again or share them with friends who might have missed the sessions. Conrad, thanks so much for um, being with us this morning and sharing your expertise. I think we've all learned a lot. Oh, Caitlin, I really appreciate it. And um, thanks to you all for making sure that these can happen. Um, it's a really great service and really appreciate the opportunity. And uh, also Vision Australia is still providing services via telehealth, which is conducted by phone, video conferencing, email, or a combination of those technologies, um, whatever works best for you. You can contact our Assistive Technology Help Desk if you'd like to get uh, set up for telehealth services. And also if you're um, needing to set up your technology to access podcasts and audio description and things like that, they'll be able to help. Um, you can contact them using the main number, which is 1300 847 466, or you can email info at visionaustralia.org to find out more about the services that we have available. Hope you can all join us on Thursday for our next check-in and chat webinar. It starts at 2pm in the Eastern States, 1.30 in South Australia and the NT, and 12pm in Perth. And we'll be speaking with Melissa Fanshaw, who's a specialist teacher of children who are blind or have low vision, about supporting your kids at home. And we'll also hear from Melissa's son, Oliver, who's a successful year eight student. Um, he enjoys many subjects and he's an elite sports person who's also legally blind. So it will be great to hear from him. Hope you can tune in for that. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. We'll see you again soon. Vision Australia. Blindness. Low vision. Opportunity. Vision Australia logo. Three navy blue ovals linked together diagonally within a bright yellow rectangle.